Hey, how's it going? So, a friend of mine is about to start studying algebra, and I told her that that is an entryway into all of some of the really fun math that's out there. Once you have the basics of algebra down, you can go different directions. You can go into trigonometry and study angles and triangles. Um, you know, with that, you could do things like calculate the angle of the sun or, uh, uh, you know, I don't know, like figure out how steep a ramp is or something based off a, based off a measurement. Um, uh, there's other directions too. Uh, calculus. Uh, some of the most fun that I had was in calculus because for the first time, I started to see real world applications. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if you're sliding a, sliding a block down, a, you know, a, like an incline, like how fast is it going to go? Uh, if you jump out of an airplane, how, how fast will you fall? Um, you know, uh, those kind of things. Uh, or, you know, if you're like draining a swimming pool while you're adding water to it and there was salt in the water, like, what's the salinization of the water over time? Um, and yeah, you, you can, you know, find uh, formulas for that. Um, now, for me, uh, some of the most fun I have is, like, discrete math. That's like, you know, if you have uh, four Jovians and three Venetians, um, you know, and they can only sit in a certain configuration in a, on a round table, how many different configurations are there? Stuff like that. Um, I like the number theory stuff, but I don't know that I'm necessarily very good at it. Um, so, um, I want to show you a problem that uh, I came across when I was in seventh grade, and it was interesting for me. Um, if you... Oh, where's my cursor? There we go. If you take one block and then two blocks and then three blocks and uh, this can continue you know for however many blocks you have um, then how many blocks total uh, now one of the things that you learn in algebra is that you can represent um, numbers as a, as a as a variable like n so the first thing that I noticed about this was that the height of the stack of blocks, I called it a pyramid, I don't know if that's technically accurate, is the same as the base. So n. So in this case, n would be equal to 3. Now if you didn't have the bottom row, then n would be equal to 2. Uh, and you know, we can represent this uh, like this n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. And for these different configurations, you have different number of blocks. So if n equals 3, then we can just write then, I suppose. There is a mathematical symbol for it, but let's not make it complicated. Um, then if b is the number of blocks, then you're going to say b equals uh, 1. See, that's the that's this 1 right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if n equals 2, here, let's just write it every time. If n equals 2, then b equals 3. So if the height of the stack is 2, then the number of blocks that you have is 3. If n is equal to 3, then b equals 6. And yeah, it just keeps increasing like that. Um, now what I wanted to do was I wanted to find a formula that would say if I just have an arbitrary height of a stack of this configuration and I want to find how many blocks it is, well, then I want to represent it as a function. So I could say b is a function of n somehow, but I didn't know what it was. Um, so I was hoping I, <laughs> I could walk you through it a little bit. 
So let me see here if I learn my uh, keyboard shortcuts. Oh, there we go. Okay, so uh, first, oh my goodness. Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> Clear again. Okay. Uh, now the first thing we're going to notice is that there's one and then two and then three uh, blocks in each row. So we could just add them together. So uh, this is six. But you know what? Let's go a little bit further. Five, six. Okay. So um, you could add these all together. This is uh, 15, 18, 20, 21. Yes, that's right. Uh, but look, there's an interesting thing. Uh, pattern that emerges here. If you add this one together with this one, you get seven. And if you add this one together with this one, you get seven. And if you add this one together with this one, you get seven. Seven, 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 seven twenty-one. It's three times seven or three times seven. I guess that's how we learned it in elementary school. Uh, dot notation is, a, I don't know, just a little bit more fun, I guess. <laughs> okay, so um, now maybe it's not an immediately apparent why this is the case, but uh, you have this number and this number, and then you're going to subtract one to get to here. So this decreases the number that you're going to have, but you're also increasing the number that you're going to have. So if you subtract one and add one, then you'll end up with the same number. And the number that you end up with is the height of the stack plus one. And how many times do you do it? Well, this is split in half. So you are going to do it the height of the stack minus one. All right? The way that we, um, or uh, not minus one, divided by two, excuse me. Uh, okay, so that would be times n divided by 2. And uh, just a little spoiler, this does work in the general case, but I want to demonstrate how, how we're able to tell that. Um, now, it's clear how this works for an even number of uh, rows or stacks or blah, uh, whatever. <laughs> but uh, does it also work for an odd number? And uh, let's just take a look here. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Now we would start off the same way. We would say one plus five is six, and two plus four is six, and then three. Uh-oh, does that mean it doesn't work? Well, let's see. Let's see. Maybe there's a way to reconcile these two things. So we would have, this is still n plus 1, right, uh, times something. It would be times, uh, I don't know, n minus 1 divided by 2 plus this last one right here, right? And what is that? That would just be, I guess, uh, n plus 1 uh, divided by 2. OK. So these look like different formulas. This is what you're going to learn in algebra, is um, how to work with numbers of this form. So we just have a factor here, n plus 1 divided by 2. This is part of it. And n plus 1 divided by 2. 
And we could just realize that we have one extra n plus one divided by two and add it in here. And if you subtract one and add one, then they cancel out. And you would be left with n plus one times, minus one plus one is just n, divided by two. Which, if you notice, is the same as this formula over here. Okay, so this is our theory, is that this formula, um, here, let me clear. So what our assertion is, is that if you have one plus two plus three all the way through, that's supposed to be clear, uh, plus, no, 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 Control Z, Control Z, N minus one uh, to N, and you add all of these together, then you're going to get N plus one uh, times N divided by two. And we want to prove this. Prove it. And to do that, we use a mathematical induction. Induction, wow, my, my <laughs> handwriting is terrible. OK, so uh, there's two steps. Now, when I was learning this back in, uh, what was it, 1998, I would always forget the first step, and you can't do that. The first step is very important. The first step is to prove the base case. The base case is the lowest value that could work. Um, now, it would work for either 0 or for 1, but I just say, for intuition's sake, let's say that the base case is 1. So when there is exactly one block that is one plus nothing else, then n is going to be equal to one, right? So we should have n plus one times n divided by two. But we know what n is, so that's going to be one plus one times one divided by two, 2 times 1 divided by 2. Uh, this is just basic arithmetic here. That's 1. So 1 equals 1. This means that we have proved the base case. 1 equals 1. Makes sense, right? Now we have to do the induction step. So the indu maybe I should clear my screen here. OK. Now, we proceed to the induction step. Induction. Now, what the induction step does is it demonstrates that if the previous case is true, that the next case is also true. So in our case, what we do is we have some function uh, so b of uh, of n. This is our function. b of n equals n plus 1 times n divided by 2. And the induction step says that we would take the next entry, b of n plus 1, and that should be equal to b of n plus what's the next uh, step? The next step would just be plus n plus 1, because that's our definition. We would be adding one more row of n plus 1 items. OK, now we should be able to take our formula and plug it in both places and demonstrate that this equation is identical on both sides. If it is, then we've proved the induction step. If it isn't, we either made a mistake or 
our original assertion was invalid. All right, so, uh, well, first off, b of n, we know what b of n is. So this is just going to be n plus 1 times n divided by 2, and then we need this part, plus n plus 1. OK? And over here, we're going to take this, but everywhere that there's an n, we're going to put in n plus 1. So we are going to have n plus 1 plus 1 times n plus 1 uh, divided by 2. And uh, this is a little bit of a mess here. <laughs> uh, but we should be able to figure it out. So um, now, the basic rules of solving equations is if you do something to one side, you have to do it to the other side, unless whatever you're doing doesn't change the equation anyway. I would like to get rid of this divided by 2 on both sides. And the way that you can do that, the way that you undo a division, is by a multiplication. So if we multiply each side of this equation by 2, then this should disappear. So you're going to have n, I'm going to combine these uh, plus 1s into a plus 2 right here times n plus 1 equals, now it's the same thing, uh, so this part times 2 is just going to get rid of this divided by 2. So we're going to have n plus 1 times n, and the divided by 2 goes away. And then over here, uh, we're multiplying by 2, so it needs to go in there and in there plus 2n plus 2. All right. I don't know if I could solve this without without having done algebra. I'm trying to think if there's a way to make it simpler and uh, just not coming up with one. Let's see if we can factor. Clearly, this is n plus 1 times 2, right? Maybe it would have been clearer to write this as 2n plus 1. And then you could see that it combines over here. Yeah, that makes sense. We'll just have that be our first step. Times n equals n plus 1, n plus 2. And what we can do is we can combine these terms. Over here, we have n plus 1 and n plus 1. So this is supposed to be plus. So we have two of these and n of these. So that would be n plus 1 times n, and then we have two more, plus 2, right? And uh, this is n plus 2 and times n plus 1. And it uh, doesn't matter what order you multiply things in. They're the same. 3 times 7 equals 7 times 3. So if you wanted to move them around, you could. But uh, these are identical, which means that we have completed our induction step. With both of the cases done, we have demonstrated that our claim is true. And that is, uh, is what induction is. So, hope that was clear. And I got to tell you a fun little story uh, uh, about my pyramid formula. It all started when I was in uh, junior high school and I was stacking VHS cassettes in a pyramid formation. And I noticed that, um, you know, I could count the ones on the bottom, but I wanted to know how many were there without having to count every single one of them. Uh, this took me weeks to figure out because I had no direction and I had no idea what I was doing. 
it was kind of a joke later on when I opened the math book and the first thing I saw was the formula that I had spent so much time trying to figure out is just like just there for everybody. Um, but you know what? That's fine. That 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 doesn't bother me. Um, maybe sometime uh, I'll lead you through, uh, you know, n squared. Uh, so you do uh, 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared. That one took me a really long time at university. Uh, but it was very satisfying when I did ultimately uh, solve it. So anyways, I uh, hope that that was mildly amusing and informative for somebody at least. And I'll uh, see you later.